I uh, want to welcome all of you here today and thank all of our Club Solutions providers for being here. What we put together today is what we hope is kind of a unique education session, which is going to feature all of the uh, providers of Club Solutions, all the different companies that we've worked with and assembled to bring resources and tools to you, our members, and to the clubs they work at uh, together in one room to give them a real quick eight minutes to talk about what they do. So hopefully you won't have enough time to fall asleep between each one. Uh, you'll get to hear a little bit about what they do um, and hopefully raise some questions and maybe uh, give you an opportunity for some follow-up at the end on questions on any particular area that we might have uh, or certainly connect the dots later throughout your week here at conference. So again, each speaker will have eight minutes. Uh, I did tell them all to prepare to change their slides really fast, uh, but we're not going to do that to them. I just gave them the kind of cap of eight minutes. So we'll start it off. I won't waste any more time. Well, with Jeff Hewitt from Locked in Affinity, who's going to talk about our Club DNA insurance program. Thank you, Christian. Um, this is going to be really exciting. We're starting off with the insurance guy first. Um, as Christian said, uh, my name's Jeff. I'm the program manager for the CMAA Club Solutions, uh, our CMAA Club DNA insurance program. I work for a firm out of Kansas City by the name of Locked in Affinity. We're the program division of Lockton. Uh, Lockton is the largest privately held broker in the world um, currently, and that allows us to commit a lot of non-shareholder resources to help grow our business and grow programs with our partners like CMAA. So talk a little bit about where we've been for the last two years to get here today. Um, it was a little over two years ago when a board member uh, was listening in a meeting about an insurance program that CMA was trying to create that was unique and something um, special for, the, for their members. Um, he then introduced us, Lockton, to CMAA, um, and we began the process of finding out more about what CMA is, uh, but more importantly, um, who the members are and how well you run your clubs. Um, and I think we've got, what, Jeff, 60 or 70 clubs to give us premium and loss data for exposures. Uh, and it proved out in the course of that study um, that CMEA member-run clubs truly are better than the industry. Um, and we went on a road show, talked to nine different carriers, um, and Ace Insurance Company, who's a highly rated carrier, um, stepped up to do the program. Some of the goals we set out at the beginning of the program was to have something that is CMAA's, that's theirs, and it's for their members only. Um, we didn't want to sit down and come out with just another club program. It's easy to go out and put the forms together, make the filings, um, and you know, just put another product on the shelf. But we wanted to come up with something that's truly unique and uh, CMA members can take advantage of it. What ACE really saw, as I said earlier, was the difference in meeting with Jeff and Christian uh, and their folks, uh, and then talking to some of, uh, of your board members as well. You know, the real value of the education, training, things you get out of CMAA that makes you um, a better underwriting risk in the long run, which is why they're on the program. So we worked uh, back with Jeff and Christian and their teams to, and ACE to come up with some you know, very tangible, specific coverage enhancements. An example would be uh, we have something called the basket. It's a half a million limit. And there are a whole bunch of little coverages underneath there that you can use up to the half a million dollar limit if you want to on that one particular item. A good example would be food spoilage. If you have a power outage and a food spoilage claim, it could be a $20,000 claim or a $100,000 claim. You tell the adjuster where you want to move the pieces in the basket. Um, we have a very unique flood and quake coverage offering. Uh, we're the only ones today that will cover golf course property as a result of flood or quake. So think bunkers, tee boxes, greens, uh, as well as physical buildings um, on the clubhouse grounds or out on the golf course. And then, of course, we have the uh, tee to green property coverage as well. Is that basket available annually? Yes. The, the limits reset on an annual basis. Um, one of the things that we, when we set out, we thought it's important that you continue to use your local agent or the agent that you prefer to use. Um, you know, we'll take that agent through the quote process. Um, a lot of times we're finding ways that we're helping make your agent better. We're running across a lot of uh, agents that were placing coverages outside of the industry. Um, when I say industry, that have specialty coverage forms. Um, 
you know, and it might be the only club that that particular agent writes. And so we can help them um, help you look at better options. And again, we have some flexibility on, on selecting what coverages you want and don't want uh, from ACE. So what benefits your club? Uh, of course, we give you a premium uh, coverage review through your agent. Um, if we bind coverage with ACE, they'll give you a loss control visit and recommendations to further enhance uh, your risk management program. Uh, and then you've got um, what I'll call the street value of over $20,000 worth of products and services available now to you at no cost. And you can see those up there, um, including Agility, Club DNA Software, CMA University, uh, and all of those kinds of things. And that, that comes when you're participating in the ACE program. So the question is, how do I start? Um, we are going through a process currently where we're contacting all CMAA members to make sure that we understand when your insurance renews, who your agent is, who your carrier is. We're putting those into our CRM databases um, so that we can send you a reminder form and your agent a reminder form about 60 days out so that um, we can make sure we're giving a, a timely quote back through uh, in that process. And again, we make it easy on the agent. We don't have them complete any of our specific forms we'll use industry-specific forms they're submitting for their normal renewal process. That's it for me. I will be um, around this week and look forward to chatting with you with, uh, if you have any questions. Christian? Thanks, Jeff. Next, we're going to have Kimberly Rawson from Insperity. Jeff didn't get to the one minute warning, so you guys don't know what that sounds like yet. Oh yeah, do I get an eight minute warning? <laughs> Seven minutes? Hi everybody, thanks so much for having us. Um, Insperity is actually one of the newest partners with CMAA and we're thrilled to have the opportunity. So, um, okay. So the mission of Insperity is to help businesses succeed so communities prosper. Here we go. Um, and it's not just a mission, it's not just words on a paper, it really is the mantra that each of our employees carries forward as we do our job, no matter what aspect of Insperity we work for. So, uh, We were founded in 1986 in Houston, Texas. That's where we are headquartered. We have 57 offices in 25 major markets. We had our initial public offering in 1997 on the New York Stock Exchange. We have 2,200 corporate employees and the Insperity services support more than 100,000 businesses with over 2 million employees. We've been a part of Forbes' best big companies, uh, Fortune's America's most admired companies, and we are a member in good standing with the Employer Services Assurance Corporation. And what that organization does is they assure that taxes are paid to the federal and state government on time. So it's good to be a member in good standing with that organization. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> let's see, did I, yeah, okay. Um, so over the course of our time, you can see that we've continued to grow our revenue, and um, we closed our books in 2012 with just under $2.3 billion, and reporting to the street next week our 2013 numbers. So here we can kind of see that we have a pretty diverse client base. Um, this really is because our model attracts America's best small and medium-sized companies uh, based on the SIC codes represented up here. Kind of see the diverse? Um, so we'll kind of talk about the Insperity Solutions model. Um, so we have many facets, but the goal at the end of the day is to help take care of your employees so you can take care of your members. Um, you'll see in the center we have your business, your club, and then in the middle, we have the blue. That's the Insperity Workforce Optimization Solution. It's our premier offering. Um, it really is the most comprehensive, robust uh, service delivery model that you can provide your employees and your uh, club. We deliver, through this model, um, administrative relief, big company, one Fortune 100 company benefits for your employees, and uh, we're able to reduce the liabilities of being an employer. Now if you go to the outside in the green, those are our business performance solutions and they're designed to help reduce the cost of being an employer. So 
Um, we'll kind of start at the top and just go through each one that we have. So we have payroll services, time and attendance system, performance management, organizational planning, recruiting services, employment screening, financial services, expense management, retirement services, and insurance services. So a wealth of opportunities and ways that we can all um, kind of part partner together. Um, so how, how does this work? How, what the power behind the Insperity Workforce Solution is due to the fact that we help protect your club through what's called a co-employment relationship. So we're able to help manage the club's employer-related liabilities by absorbing uh, many of the employer-related risks and responsibilities. So through that co-employment model, we have two service options. The first is our workforce synchronization. And um, what's included in this is benefits management, employment administration, government compliance, business alignment survey, um, and employer liability management. And it's all delivered to our uh, clients through a dedicated service team that's dedicated to the CMAA uh, members. Next we have, again, the workforce optimization. And again, this is our flagship offering. Um, everything that I talked about with the from the previous slide with workforce synchronization is included in optimization. Um, and also included is, I guess it's halfway down, uh, it starts with performance management support, online training and development, recruiting and outplacement support, and culture and leadership development. Certainly those, all those options are available for um, in the synchronization model and project-based for the last four bullets up there. Um, but really it's, you know, a good discussion to see which direction a club um, would like to go. So back to like employee benefit, um, enrollment and termination, um, workers' comp claim investigations and management, employee EEOC claim investigation and management, employer policy, handbook development, anything in the realm of payroll, government compliance, finance, this right there. Um, so just a little snapshot and what conversation about employer liabilities and responsibilities would be complete without talking about health care reform. Um, so Insperity has developed a tool that's an online tool. It's about a four to five minute survey. You go through and answer some questions about the current state of your workforce and we're able to um, send back a customized report that just gives you some areas that you need to start looking at based specifically on the structure and the nature of your organization. Um, so you can find that at our new uh, website. It's insperity.com slash CMAA. So pretty easy to remember. Um, and that's where you can see the actual video that you are hearing. Um, and that pulse check link is on the main page towards the bottom if you're interested in doing that as well. So uh, www.insperity, that's I-N-S-P-E-R, ity.com slash CMAA. Thanks for your longer than eight minutes time. <laughs> Just for the record, everything worked fine until Jeff Magoon plugged something into the computer right before the session started. Our next uh, presenter will be Josh Smith from Agility Recovery. Many of you folks have heard us talking about Agility for some time. They are a big part of our Premier Club Services subscription model. And Josh will spend a little bit of time talking about those things. Thank you, Christian. And uh, thanks, everybody. Yeah, um, like Christian said, we've been a member of the Club Solutions family for uh, a little while now, actually coming up on three years. It's hard to believe. It's been an absolute pleasure working with the clubs that I've had the opportunity to work with thus far. Just so I've got sort of a point of reference, who in the room has heard of Agility and worked with us a little bit 
um, with the membership. Fantastic, at least a couple. Good, good. Um, well, I want to share with you just a little bit about where we come from, who we are, uh, so that you have that uh, knowledge going forward, um, how we approach disaster recovery and continuity of operations or business continuity, which is what Agility does, by the way. Um, help your club in a disaster, small or large. So we'll talk a little bit about the history first. Uh, Agility was actually started by General Electric 25 years ago, and they started Agility as an internal program because they saw a need to recover any of what they refer to as their business units at or near where they were operating at that time, rather than sort of having to pick them up and move them somewhere else or just shut them down altogether, uh, because neither one of those are, are good options in a lot of different cases. So what they put together was a core solution of four, uh, what we now today call elements of disaster recovery. Uh, back then, I'm pretty sure they just called them the stuff, or they had some probably really technical and long-term form, actually. Uh, but they are, remain the, the four elements of our solution, which are temporary space, temporary power, communications and computer systems. Now every club has uh, some intricacies here and there, but from a base standpoint in terms of your administrative capacity, these are things you must have to be up and operational, and not just administratively. Uh, backup power obviously is, is useful in a lot of different scenarios, uh, both, both for your administrative operations, but also for um, you know, uh, food and dining and your food and beverage and your, and your golf course, uh, the pump stations for your irrigation system, things like that. Uh, you've got to have a place to be if you're in an unfortunate circumstance where you do lose uh, access to some or all of your space you will need temporary space to get set up in um, and especially while you're dealing with some of the remediation that may need to be done to clean up after a disaster uh, communications is all important. If you cannot uh, field and receive calls from your members and also gain access to databases and other things that you'll need to from a data standpoint, you'll be dead in the water. So we help with that and get you back up and running. Uh, we've got different ways that we can uh, support communications, one of which in, in a worst case scenario is to deploy a satellite dish out to you and set up operational phones and internet over a satellite link, which is a highly specialized resource that you just can't walk down the street and find somebody who can do that for you. So we are here to assist you with that through this program, as well as bring in computer systems. If you're in a situation where there's been a flood or a fire and you've lost your actual computers, your PCs, uh, phone handsets, your keyboards, your mice, um, your uh, peripherals, printers, fax machines, multifunction devices, servers even, network gear, basically everything to build your office back up from the ground up, we have and can deploy very quickly to you. So as I said, that, that solution that was created way back then is still the solution in place and available to you all. Uh, the benefit is we've been doing this for a really long time. We're no longer a division of General Electric. Uh, we sort of spun out on our own. But over the course of these 25 years, the, the base, the main thing to take away from this is we've rescued thousands of operations, not just businesses, but public sector entities, clubs included, and we've never failed to get any of our members the resources that they need. Um, so basically this talks a little bit about uh, how we sort of came apart from General Electric. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with all the gritty details, but just suffice it to say that uh, we sort of wanted to switch things on their head because before these types of services were really only available to very large Fortune 500 companies. In fact, as soon as General Electric decided that they would spin this out side of their operations, that's who they went to to sell it. And they did very well with that, but we realized uh, that everybody needs access to this and, and especially you all as, as clubs and club managers especially. Um, so we've partnered with CMAA to allow access to the Agility membership so that you don't have to come to us on a one-on-one -on -one basis and uh, join Agility and, and pay for the membership. If you become a part of the programs that give you access to that as a uh, part of the menu of wonderful benefits that you're going to hear about throughout the presentation today, we'll be here for you. And we'll get started working with you by getting in touch and letting you know more than I'm going to tell you today about how it is that we do what we do. Um, basically what we're trying to do is increase your culture of preparedness at your club. 
Uh, we want to give you ways that you can become more prepared for whatever may come your way. Um, and that includes lots of different things, but uh, talking about who's critical to your operations, what parts of your operations are the most critical, do you know the things about those operations to ensure that if you have to call upon agility or anyone else to help you in a disaster situation, you've got the details uh, of the questions that they're going to, the answers to the questions that they're going to have to ask you. That's what I do on a daily basis when people call agility and say, I need help. I have to ask some questions about that will help me understand how I can help them. We created a tool called My Agility that's included with your membership. It's an online portal uh, for disaster recovery planning and, and continuity of operations planning. So we get you started with that account and point you down the right road on how to uh, build on top of a plan that you already have in place or how to create a disaster recovery and continuity of operations plan if you don't currently have anything on paper or uh, stored somewhere. And this gives you a nice way to do that electronically. On the web, you can access it from anywhere that you are. You store your plans in an off-site secure location so that, you know, if, if things go really, really bad and uh, that, that plan was sitting in a binder, you haven't lost it. It's here. It's online. It's stored here. And it also communicates with agility. So if you need a generator, you've stored the details on the size and type of generator right there in your account that you'll need. And when we ask you, you'll say, of course, I put that into my agility because that's what you told me to do. And we'll get you that generator very, very quickly. By the way, we want to deliver any combination of those resources to you within 48 hours of you telling us go. So once we get the author authorization from you to uh, mobilize any of our resources, 48 hours, which is really, really fast. Generators can be even faster. Uh, we average about nine hours delivery time for generators 350 kW and smaller. So uh, we want to do it for you. We want to do it very quick. Um, if you need to utilize our resources, all you end up paying is our out-of-pocket costs. We don't mark up anything. So if we're delivering you a generator, we rent that generator. We get it out to you. Uh, we pay for it up front. And then at the end of the process, we'll get the invoice from the vendor that's helping us with that generator, and we'll pass it directly through you, no upcharge at all. CMA has basically made that possible for you because they're covering uh, your membership with us, and those are the dollars that let us do this for you at no profit. So whenever you call us, uh, just know we're not trying to push something on you that you don't need. We just want to get you the solution that we think you do need and that you know that you need. Um, you'd have to do this regardless of whether agility is in the, in the uh, uh, picture. What we want to do is take some of that uh, logistic burden off of your plate so that you can do what you're really there to do, which is serve your members. Make sure that you're communicating effectively with them and make sure that uh, you maintain their trust, which is all important. Uh, we will manage the logistics of figuring out where we're going to bring all these things from and how we're going to get them uh, there to you and just tell you when to, uh, when to expect them. So sometimes you're call, uh, people call agility in, in small disasters. Sometimes people call agility in the wake of very large disasters like a Superstorm Sandy. We have helped CMAA clubs in both situations. Um, one was a, just a, a power outage that happened due to a localized uh, uh, situation, but it happened right before July 4th weekend very bad time for power, not having power. Lots of events planned. We got a really big generator in there, and they didn't have a problem. Uh, we also recovered a club after Superstorm Sandy. Lots of clubs in trouble, lots of flooding. Um, got them back up and running with temporary uh, resources so that they can get their administrative capacities back up and running and manage the remediation of the damaged uh, facilities. So uh, again, to the point, um, we are here to take that burden off of your plate, or at least the burden around those pieces of what, what it is that we do do. Uh, provide you with temporary power, provide you with temporary space, computer systems, uh, network and communication support, and let you do uh, the rest of the things that you're there to do. So um, hopefully, uh, we were going to take those out, because you don't have to make that decision. Uh, if you join this program, you're going to have access to agility. But, um, again, been doing it a long time. I really hope I get the opportunity to work with you from a preparedness standpoint. Um, if you've got any questions about uh, what it is that Agility does, please track me down after the session and I'd be happy to uh, talk with you. Thank you. Josh brought up a good point. Any questions? We, we should have some time at the end of the session to go over questions and kind of an open uh, Q&A at the end, so as well as um, throughout the week. So next up is going to be Stephen Olenek from Belfour uh, that heads up our uh, property uh, remediation and restoration and reconstruction services. Thank you, Christian. Um, I appreciate everybody taking the time to, uh, to attend this. and. Uh, 
For those of you who are or have been fortunate enough not to ever meet someone from Belfour, uh, we are the world's largest disaster recovery company, privately owned. We are currently in 28 countries, uh, 6,000 full-time employees. I think that's closer to 7,000 now. Uh, 250 offices worldwide. The majority of those, of course, are in North America. Um, one of the things that I think most people um, sort of hard, have a hard time getting their head around when they think of restoration, they think of some of our competitors like the serve pros and service masters of the world uh, who may have more locations but are, of course, franchised. L4 is completely and uh, solely owned out of uh, our corporate offices in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, like I said, we have uh, uh, 250 plus offices right now. And I think, you know, at, by the end of 2017, I think we're, we're hoping to be close to 300. This is just a quick little, uh, some dots of where we are. I think most people in this room would uh, probably be able to pick out your club near you know, one of our locations. But the unique thing is that they're not just an office that has a telephone and an address. These are fully staffed offices. They have project managers, they have general managers, uh, there's labor force, equipment. I think Belfour has close to a million dehumidifiers and probably two to three million fans uh, just in North America. Uh, personal attention. One of the things that we do at Belfour, obviously in a, in, a, in a program like this, we are, there's two people that are part of this, uh, or I guess the managers of the account, uh, myself and Daryl Tuno. Uh, one of the things that I think is unique is that regardless of where this event would be, whether your club is in, in Missouri or whether it's in California, whether it's in Virginia, we would be notified of that we would be able to respond to that as well as dealing directly with the project manager that's on site. If it's a large enough loss, one of either Darrell or myself would actually go out to the site to make sure that it's being handled correctly. Uh, that's very important to know. Um, we have a four hour response or less. Um, during flooding, that changes a little bit simply because if you've got an area that's been flooded out, we can't go into those areas until it's safe to go in. Uh, when we did the uh, Opry Mills Mall, they had four feet of water in 1.5 million square feet of space. Uh, the water did not recede for about six days, but once it was in there, we had 600 people working two 12-hour uh, shifts. So we had 1,200 people working that every day for about three months. We demoed and flood cut every wall, every dressing room, um, every bathroom in that entire facility and got it ready for reconstruction. Uh, we also, in doing that, we also handled, I think, 65 or 70 of the stores also in that, including the two anchor stores. Um, we've also, uh, for 12 consecutive years, we've been voted number one, the number one contractor by a qualified remodeler. Um, we, I think, with sales, uh, roughly about 1.5 billion. Uh, some of the, one of the things that Belfour does that's also unique is that we are a single source provider. We do everything from one window board ups to uh, completely redoing Tulane University after Hurricane Katrina. We did everything there from the documents to the emergency cleaning. We did electronics. Uh, we actually did, uh, besides the cleaning and the drying, we also did the reconstruction. And we did it 91 days and that is our largest project to date, I think just under $300 million. And it took us a lot longer than 91 days to get paid, but um, that's, that's the nature of the beast. Um, why Belfour? Again, single source accountability, timely response, nationwide coverage. That is really more geared towards someone who has 100 different locations in, in all parts of the country. But I think what's unique again is that it's a consistent, we don't you know, we're not a franchise, so we're not, uh, I'm not competing against Christian who may own uh, the local one down the street. Uh, everything is, is uh, done the same way throughout the entire, excuse me, done throughout the entire company the same way. Uh, global leader in power. We do have uh, exclusive agreements with uh, Agreco and with uh, Sunbelt. Uh, so when we need power, normally that power 
we use it to run our equipment. If we're doing a large scale CAT and we need generators to run our equipment so we can dry a building, that's usually what our, what our generators are there for. Uh, not really to just run a building to get something up and running. We can do that if need be, uh, but it's really there for our equipment. Um, uh, shoring and support, of course, board up, shrink wrap. We did uh, in Chile, we did uh, all the Iron Mountain buildings that got compromised. That's a picture down below of one of the Iron Mountain buildings. We did, I think, seven buildings uh, in sizes from 300,000 square feet to a million square feet. And we were able to shrink wrap the roofs to buy us time, essentially, to move hundreds of millions of tons of documents, which we also did. Um, there we go. The industry's most extensive inventory of drying equipment. Uh, tractor trailers, we have, I think, 60 right now, and that's growing every day. Uh, each one of those 18-wheelers uh, uh, are mobile warehouses. Each one holds, I think, 600 pieces of equipment. Uh, another thing that people don't realize about Belfour is we are a construction company. We're one of the largest construction companies in the world that happens to also be the world's largest uh, restoration company. Uh, we have complete electrical and mechanical and plumbing. Um, we do all kinds of roofing. Now, some things we will sub out to our, to our uh, vendors uh, and we'll act as a general contractor in most cases uh, when something like that happens. Uh, also, full-scale demolition as well. Um, our mobile command centers, that's the one that we have right there. I think we just purchased our second. Uh, they're unique because if a large scale cat happens in an area that we don't have an office within an hour, uh, we'll bring in one of the mobile warehouses and, uh, I'm sorry, one of the mobile command centers and uh, that'll basically act as our office and that's where we would be able to process claims and, you know, and get things moving. Where that's unique to the members here is when we're handling a large scale CAT, uh, regional CAT, we're, we're, we're not just handling your club, we're handling your club, we're handling six other clubs at the same time, we're doing the Targets, the Walmarts, and we need to be able to have a, an area for us to coordinate the labor, to coordinate the efforts, and these things are great for that. Uh, our red alert, which is what this, the club DNA, um, and Belfour uh, obviously are, are now together with the Red Alert. And the Premium Plus is for some of the, for the Club DNA program participants. Uh, I think all CMA, CMAA members are uh, members in the Red Alert Basic. When we have a large scale storm that happens, the, the Premium Red Alert get the first priority. Red Alert Basic gets the second, and then the call in people from there. So uh, when we did, uh, during Hurricane Sandy, I think we did around 1,200 losses, somewhere around five to $600 million worth of business. Uh, again, still waiting to get paid on a lot of that stuff. Um, but again, uh, we'll figure that out. And, um, but it really is important to understand that the response that Belfort can provide uh, really helps protect your club, meaning we do everything from extracting the water to, you know, to drying the structure, but we also do and can handle things like your documents, um, you know, getting that stuff secured and protected. Um, it's really important to understand that, um, you know, it, it is, it's, 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 we're a single source provider when it comes to recovery. I think we talked about most of this, I think. Uh, our, uh, the, I guess the number that we are using right now is the 855-225-CLUB. Um, I think we're trying to figure out whether that's going to be part of the basic plan or whether that's going to be the number that's going to be used for the, uh, for the premium plus. But either way, that, uh, that number would work. And all, you, all we would need to know is what plan you're currently in. So that's it. Any questions? Okay, next up to talk about CMA University's Club Training Center, Jeff Magoon from CMA National Staff. Thanks, Christian. Well, I just learned that if you needed to do any remodeling, 
you want to hire Bell for because you don't have to pay him for two years. So that's good. Steve, thanks. You're a finance company as well. This is good stuff. Look, I'll talk to you about CMA who wants to do some remodeling at headquarters. So, Well, I'm going to talk about CMA University really quick in the Club Training Center. There are um, uh, two components um, of CMA University, and I'll touch on them a little bit. So the big question is, what is CMA University? Uh, it is a dynamic online tool for the club industry, uh, an online learning tool. It, and it fulfills two pieces. Those of you who are CMA members in here today, there is a value proposition for you as a CMA member. This is free to you. There's a lot of value here as a CMA member. I'm going to talk briefly about that. And I'm going to talk about the club training center part, which is the part that is, as a value to you, you can then take this tool and train your staff. Because there's a lot of questions about how you're able to implement and train staff at, at facilities. So it's super simple to use. Uh, anybody in here, has, has anybody gone on CMA University by chance? So a few of you have, good. I see all the way in the back, Randy and Bob, thanks. Um, you guys can't see Randy and Bob because they're way back. It's got to be at least 100 yards. Um, so this is, what the, this is what the interface looks like. And you see on the left-hand side, there's CMA Professional Development, which is kind of focused and directed for our CMA member. And the right side, the Club Training Center, which is focused for uh, the employees and the staff at facilities. Um, my report card is obviously for those who actually log in. So I'm going to talk about the value prop to you as a member, CMA. CMA Professional Development. When you click on CMA Professional Development, we have put these topics in place that, um, that address you as a member. You can see we've got, I think, nine here, Allied Association resources. So if we have any content on different Allied Associations, here's where you would go to get that content. Archive webinars. Uh, I, I know that everybody has seen, gotten an email about a webinar that we're doing. I think uh, w this is where we archive those webinars for you to access at a later date. Our CAP partners. Um, anybody use Jonas in here, for example? Okay, Jonas, I see a lot of hands. Um, and under the CAP partner resources, you can go in and, lo and, and look at all the courses that Jonas has from a technology perspective to help you train on, on their system. That's just an example. We've got a lot more of the CAP partners content coming soon. Club Solutions. Um, what is Club Solutions? That's why some of you are here. This is a place where you can go and learn about all the products that you've talked to, that you've heard about today. PDFs, download, downloadable PDFs, other types of content, um, actual uh, interactive content. You'll probably see you'll see Christian. You'll see a lot of our staff talking to you about the different products and services that we have. Uh, we are building this out. We're also doing a lot of the uh, club governance information on, so you can actually have your, uh, your board actually go here and watch uh, about some of the different products and solutions that we have. The training center, which I'll talk about in just a second on the employee side. Certificate programs. If you've heard about, if Jason, if you've listened to Jason Koningsfeld uh, on the road recently, uh, he's talked about this. This has been an ask. We have a whole lot of new certificate programs that are coming. So this is obviously geared towards our member. Manager and development. You know, this is probably, right now, this is the fastest growing area where we see a lot of members that are acquiring or purchasing the manager and development for, obviously, managers and development, for staff. Subject matter experts. This is where you're going to see, um, for instance, customer service. We have a subject matter expert, uh, Shep Hyken, who has his whole program in here as subject matter experts. So as, as you guys are out there listening to other trainers, whether it be at a chapter or at a different association, let us know about that because we would like to put them on our system. It's a great place for them to, uh, to, be, sh to be showcased and it's a great place for you to have your staff access that training uh, outside of you as well. And then the big value here, training for CMI credit. We built all of our courses that we have that the education department put in one place for you to access to get your CMI credits. So just so you know, as a value, as part of your membership on CMA University, you can, right now you can get 73 credits here on CMA University free of charge. So hopefully that uh, provides a value back to you. So it's, it's simple to use. And one of the questions that comes up is, how do I, how do I train my staff? And how does that look and how does it feel? Well, as you see here as the interface, you see we've got, you can private label it. You'll see down here in the bottom left, Bellhaven Country Club. It says at the very top, welcome to Bellhaven Country Club's training center. So when your employee logs in, they feel like this is your system. Um, 
there's a communication tool where you see the light pad where you internally can use staff to communicate to all of your staff. And again, you can access this anywhere on any type of system, on whether it's a, an iPad or if it's a computer. And this is where the employee will go in and log in. You can see here on this topic page, it's a little bit different. It's really geared towards the employee at the facility. So you've got club safety and food and beverage, golf sports and rec, health and wellness, the lovely uh, HR and compliance, which I think there's a lot of that, that that's uh, being handled today, leadership, member services, technology. Actually, in technology is where you'll find the Jonah stuff because that's where employee would go to train or technology versus a CAP program. And then if you, are, if you do have a manager that's a member of CMA, we do have the training for CMI credit they could access here as well. If they're not a CMA member, uh, they don't have access on this page. So let's take a look at club safety and kind of what that looks like. You can see we've got five different uh, courses here. You've got the essential safety for employees and managers. So we, we split that up for you as well as some environmental, some specialized safety, and then we have some in, in Spanish as well. So this is what the interface would look like. We click on something for essential safety for employees, and then we have a list of the courses inside of there. So you have a slew from OSHA uh, on the safety side to a lot of best practices. It's about awareness. It's about uh, you know, making sure that your staff knows what those best practices are at your facility. And you're creating a standard of training. So most courses are five minutes to 60. Uh, there's always a quiz on the end. Uh, it's, it's not rocket science, I promise you. They can go back and take the quiz if they don't fail it. But what you're trying to do is transfer that risk. You're trying to make sure that uh, they are comprehending something. We want to measure that, and then we track it. They get a certificate as well. It's, some of the courses are very interactive, like you see at the top, where you'll have a, a person, that, a subject matter expert, that will jump on top of the screen and talk to you, and then you can actually answer the question, what type of workplace emergency do you think is most common? fires, for example, um, and then a lot of uh, some of our courses also is the old school way, like I, I call it, and it's, we're always updating these where you have the, kind of like that PowerPoint with the audio and the visual. A little mix of both. There's a quiz at the end. You get immediate you, notification if you've passed the quiz or not. If not, you obviously can go back and take it again. We record your results. And the great part of this is about the CYA. You know, you as a manager need to know if those employees are being trained. And you're, you're relying on your supervisors or different department heads. This is a snapshot of your facility, 14 people signed in. This is a two-week period that we just printed and took a quick um, uh, a snapshot of it. But this is your individual facility. You can always manage it. You can have reports go to you every day at 8 a.m. if you'd like. If you really want to stress out a supervisor, you, you have a report go to them every day, 9 a.m. Uh, so this... One minute. I'm the first person. I hope you darn. So you can view the employee progress. And just to give you an idea, we, we, we launched this back in September, uh, kind of soft launched it and, exp and, and showed it to, this, uh, to our LLC. And we now, just through J uh, January 15th, or, so the end of January, uh, we had 6,890 courses taken. So we're excited about this, and there's a lot of content that's being viewed right now. Now I've got to hustle. Choose from over 200 courses, a lot of topics, the topics that you need from a compliance today well over 200 courses, and I think we've got about 40 or 60, somewhere between 40 and 60 subject matter experts. Features include, we talked about the customization, the private label, how often employees sign in. This is a truly a tracking tool as well. I get a certificate for course completion, and we do have multiple languages. So how do you get it? I know I'm down to 20 seconds, three ways. CMA, you're a member, it's free. We want you to go on and look at it. Take, take advantage of the 73 credits that you can get. It's part of our DNA insurance program. And last, we have three models that was by your peers, 50 employees or less, 50 to 100, 100 plus. Uh, we do charge for it $1,000. So how'd I do, Christian? Good. Get off. Get off, OK. I got to start enforcing the rules because we're looking pretty tight here. So. Next up is Ray Cronin from Club Benchmarking. Thank you. And I have my cell phone timer, so I see if I can keep it under eight minutes. Probably not. I told Jeff I can't say hello in eight minutes. 
so club benchmarking, what is it? It's the, it's the engine for the CMAA annual surveys and the club industry reports, the finance and operations, compensation and benefits, and policies and procedures. Also, the data that's in club benchmarking in the database feeds the CMAA economic impact report, which is critical, obviously, for the industry for any number of reasons. It's also an online database that's available 24-7. Uh, it's a complete 360-degree view of the club's business. Uh, it covers all the areas I had mentioned earlier. Also, governance, strategic planning, uh, member policies, and it's comprehensive. That's the key. The, uh, the CMAA reports, if you participate in the annual CMAA survey, the reports are free for participating in the survey. If you decide to subscribe to club benchmarking, you can generate automatic graphical reports that allow you to compare your club to defined peer sets. And the reality is, or we believe strongly, and I think we are starting to see evidence of this in many, many ways, it's a better, more strategic approach to filling what is a clear need, which is data sharing in the club industry. I would suggest that the uh, approach for data sharing, let's say historically, has been an ad hoc approach. Spreadsheets, emails on chapter listservs, phone calls to peers at clubs across the street. Those ad hoc surveys, the data is not standardized. That's, that's a very important issue. It does not exist year to year. It's not something that could be used to monitor trends over time in, in, in a very critical manner, especially if you're trying to communicate to your board. It lacks context. It's not enough to know what the dues at the club are without knowing how many members are at that particular club. It's not enough to know what the dues are without understanding how much total dues revenue there is at the club. The ad hoc process, it may seem counterintuitive, is actually more time consuming and less beneficial to the club, the manager of the club, and the board. Club benchmarking is a, just like everything we've seen today, I think what the solutions uh, brand has done at CMA is trying to leverage technology and let's say subject matter expertise to the benefit of the club manager and the club itself. Uh, club benchmarking is trying to leverage technology to make data sharing easier. It is easier. One survey, once a year, standardized, done. You can either get the standard CMA reports or a subscription, your choice. It's more comprehensive. You don't ask 12 times a year to get the data you need when someone on the board asks you. You do it proactively. You put all the data into the database once a year, but you've done it all. Uh, it's true apples to apples because of the standardization. And one thing that we've begun to work on, and we are announcing at conference this week, is now we're working with the financial software companies, the management information companies, Clubsoft, Jonas, Northstar, IBS, companies like that. The first one we work with is, is Clubsoft. We've begun the dialogue with Jonas as well. But there's a button now in those systems, in Clubsoft, you can click the button and submit the data to the database automatically. So that's how easy it will become to participate in the annual industry surveys. That's a critical evolution, obviously. Club benchmarking is a subscription-based online club business intelligence tool designed for clubs. We like to say it really is, and it truly is. It's the MBA view of the club and the club business. And if you, as we've heard with all of the solutions that are offered through CMAA today, a core aspect of it is education, advancing the state of the art and knowledge. This advances the state of the art and understanding the business of clubs. It's the wisdom of the crowd. It is truly the centralized knowledge, all of the ways that things are done in the industry, all the different approaches, all the different clubs, all the small clubs, large clubs, the 2,850 clubs that participate in CMAA and folks at the clubs. All that knowledge, that diverse knowledge, is in one place manifested by the financial and operating and governance results of the club. That's strategic benchmarking and that allows the manager to become a proactive fact-based lead leader and actually lead the board, which too often doesn't understand the business of the club industry, more, more often than not. 
we like to say it's a, it's a tool that allows for fact-based decision making. Um, a couple of quick examples. These are real examples that occurred in the last three months. A manager has the fitness director come in to his office, upset for some reason based on a particular phone call. Uh, she said, I'm way underpaid. Fortunately, that manager was a subscriber and, and literally in five minutes generated this chart which shows where that fitness director is on the spectrum of fitness directors in clubs that have the same amount of revenue as the, that club. And that fitness director was actually in the 74th percentile against all other fitness directors, so clearly not underpaid, actually not necessarily overpaid either, but clearly it's a fact-based discussion rather than an emotional discussion. Another example uh, dealing with the, oftentimes we'll get called on by boards to uh, maybe add data to the discussion around what the uh, compensation for the head of the club is, the GM, COO. In one particular case there was a tendency for the board to think the general manager was overpaid. The general manager, again, the data shows maybe not, maybe actually underpaid. Everyone in the everyone in the room probably has a member at their club that belongs to a club somewhere else as well and they like to take that fact pattern back to their own club. This is an example where a member at a northern club belonged to a club in Arizona as well was on the board of the northern club and was trying to make the point that the dues revenue, our, the increase in our dues revenue isn't keeping up with the broader industry. I know because I'm on the, I belong to another club. This chart generates automatically, it shows the change in dues revo, revenue year over year. This particular club had a 4.3 percent increase in its dues revenue, which was 1.8 percentage points above the norm for the industry at large. That short circuits a discussion that otherwise would be very circuitous. And this one is my favorite, and since I'm keeping under the time, I'll tell the story quickly, but uh, this, is the, this is the nightmare of all nightmares. A club manager in Colorado that had a new board member join the board last fall, oh, about a year ago, actually, last spring. And uh, what did the club, the new board member do before he became a member of this club's board? He was a retired club manager. Was he empathetic? Absolutely not. He was a nightmare. His first board meeting, he said to his fellow board members, hey, you know, everyone knows I used to run a club. We're spending way too much on golf ops labor. Fortunately, they were a subscriber and they could print this chart out that shows their golf ops and golf shop labor per round played. And as you can see, they were in the 20th percentile. Club benchmarking is a team that is dedicated to serving CMAA in this great industry. All of us on our team love this industry. We're very passionate about it and we believe strongly that elevating fact over opinion in the club will actually result in healthier clubs, more empowered managers, and more strategic boards. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Next up from our AED certification program and cardio ready is Stacy Wright. Thank you, Christian. Thanks everyone for coming out today. My name is Stacy Anger and I'm with Cardio Ready. I run our fitness and recreation um, practice and concentrate specifically on the golf and membership clubs, particularly for the CMAA membership. Uh, so I'll start out a little bit about what exactly sudden cardiac arrest is. It is the number one cause of death in America, it takes over 300,000 lives per year, which is more than lung cancer, stroke, breast cancer, and leukemia combined. Now without early defibrillation, over 92% of those cardiac arrest victims will die. But the good news is, is that with early defibrillation, we can increase that survival rate to over 70%. So what exactly is sudden cardiac arrest? Well, a lot of people confuse it with a heart attack. It's actually very different. Cardiac arrest is an electrical problem, whereas a heart attack is more of a plumbing problem. Now, it can happen at any age, um, kids unfortunately, as well as older adults, but your risk does increase as you get older. Um, causes can range from underlying coronary artery disease, genetics, trauma, illness, uh, as well as obesity and other negative health factors can increase your risk for this happening. 
Um, as I mentioned, timing really is everything in a cardiac arrest. The probability of surviving cardiac arrest decreases 10% for each minute that goes by from collapse until treatment. Now, the average EMS response on average across the United States is about 10 minutes. So as you can see, by the time that ambulance gets to your club, arrives to the victim, unfortunately, it's far too late for most cardiac arrest victims. So what we've done is, of course, automatic external defibrillators are the treatment, and they're used to, to shock the heart, and they can correct two of the most common arrhythmias seen in cardiac arrest victims. AEDs are affordable. They're so easy to use. Um, there's studies done with sixth graders that were pitted against EMTs, and the time to shock was actually just 23 seconds longer than an EMT. So they're incredibly easy to use. They've got voice prompts that prompt you through the entire process. Um, and guide you exactly what to do, and they're incredibly safe, and they will only shock if the heart is in an arrhythmic state that that heart, um, or that a shock can correct. Now, for those of you that may have AEDs, or if you're thinking of AEDs, there's a couple of common issues um, or aspects that you really want to address to have a successful program. And this is all about what Cardio Ready helps you do and helps you plan out um, a successful strategy for your club. Now, where are your AEDs located? Oftentimes we'll walk into a club and they'll say, oh, you know, I, I think it's in the manager's office. Or it might be behind a locked door, or behind a desk where not everybody can see it. You do want them in a very public area where they're easily seen and accessible by everybody, including guests and visitors. What make and model are your AEDs? You should really be familiar with all aspects of your program. Um, there are six major manufacturers out there. Part of the Cardio Ready service is to help you evaluate what is the right AED for you. They do have different attributes, um, including if you're going to be placing them out on your course, if they're only going to be inside, lightweight, dust and water ratings, um, and length of battery life and electrode pad life. Uh, when your batteries and pads are going to expire, most need replacing every two to four years, and we can help you uh, plan ahead and make sure that you have extra pads and batteries, batteries, batteries and uh, when you're going to need them at your club to replace them in time to keep that unit operating properly. Um, part of our service is called our Cardio Ready eStore. Through our online certification center, we've made it really easy for you to keep up on ordering your replacement parts. You need to know, or you need to make sure that you know how to order these replacement parts quickly and easily. If you've got to, you know, move around and call 10 different people to figure out where, where you can get a battery, because it's already expired, you're losing time, and unfortunately, if your unit's out of service, then you're at a higher risk for something to happen. CPR and AED certifications. This is a really important part of your program. Oftentimes, if you ask around your club, you might find out that you have more people already trained um, than you may know about. We offer CPR and AED certifications. We can bring trainers on site. We can help you find programs outside of um, your community, but it's really something that should be encouraged amongst all of your employees. It's going to help you have the best outcomes, whether something happens on your site or even for your community. There's a lot of brand implications. If somebody has an accident and it's off your site, but your employee was the one that was trained in, in emergencies and they knew what to do, you know, that's great brand implications back for your club. Do you know the last time your AED was inspected? It's very important. AEDs are actually mandated to have regular maintenance at least once a month. And it's as simple as going over to your AED, checking for that green light to be on, and making sure there's no error messages. But it is incredibly important for your Good Samaritan protections to be in place, that these are happening, and that they're tracked and documented. What we've actually done is we've come up with a mobile app called the Maintenance Minder. You bring it up to the AED, you scan your barcode in, and you check whether or not the AED is OK. Once that's logged in there, it uploads into your certification center, and then you've got an online record that that check has been completed for that month. Um, on the flip side, if it does need service, that'll go directly to your Cardio Ready Relationship Manager, and we'll help get that changed for you. Uh, the timing piece. If you can get an AED to anywhere in your facility within three minutes, that's actually the cornerstone of our programs, and we want to help you make sure that anywhere on your property, you can get that AED to a victim within that three minute time frame. And we'll help you assess your property, assess where the highest risks, risks are going to happen, and help you place those AEDs in the most optimal positions across your properties. After an AED is used, unfortunately if it is used, um, there are certain procedures that are mandated across certain states. Um, the AED needs to be inspected, replacement parts might be needed, and paperwork might need to be filled out. 
uh, might need to be sent back to the hospital or to your local EMS unit. We send an inspector out to help you with the entire process. We do provide free replacement batteries and pads after an incident and then make sure that inspector is on site to make sure that those are replaced properly and that you're rescue ready again. Now, am I at risk? A very common question we get is all about the liability. And am I at risk, am I at higher risk if I have an AED on my property than if I ignore the issue and don't put what in? Well, the question is no. There's various Good Samaritan protections in all 50 states. It protects the users, the owners, site managers, the CPR trainers, overseeing physicians. Um, and as I mentioned before, the key to having those Good Samaritan protections stay in place is making sure that you have all of the requirements that you need in that program. That includes the things like maintenance, training, making sure you have your EMS filings that need to be completed with your state or local governments. Physician oversight is required in some states. And again, having each piece of your program documented and tracked. A look at the legislative and legal landscape currently right now. Um, as you can see, having no AED on site is actually the cause for 50% of the current litigation out there. Um, the other notable one is the lack of proper emergency response and your employees not knowing what to do in the case of an emergency. Communication is a really big part of our programs and helping you make sure that all of your employees know what to do, when to call 911, where the AEDs are, how to go into action when it's needed. Um, and another really important thing to note is that with all of the litigation out there, not one case has taken the Good Samaritan protections away from a site that has used it. So the Good Samaritan protections have always been upheld, and they don't want to discourage people from having AEDs. They want to encourage you and make sure that you do know that you are protected as long as you put a strong program into place. So Cardio Ready. Again, we have a singular focus on cardiac emergency response programs. We specialize in six distinct, distinct sectors, uh, myself in the fitness and recreation and golf and membership clubs. Um, we've got a number of internationally known clients, partners. We've got a great partnership with CMAA and a large number of golf and membership clubs that we work with. And we've gained a lot of knowledge and expertise about how to really implement these quickly and easily into the membership club industry. Um, and our, as well as offering is applicable to clubs that have AEDs, or if you're just thinking about AEDs, we can help you simply manage them, or we can help you start to finish gaining the AEDs as well. There's three cornerstones, really, of a good program. The operations, the legal aspect, and the medical aspect. On the operations side, you want to have a clear-cut strategy. Um, and we help you lay out a plan, an emergency response plan for your site, make sure the AEDs are in the proper places, and make sure the maintenance piece and train responder piece is in place. Uh, procurement, we can help you procure all of your devices and replacement parts. Assessment, we do do an annual assessment by a, either an EMT, a paramedic, or a nurse, um, and that happens annually. Um, training, we can help you with the CPR AED instruction, and again, the management of the program through our Cardio Ready Certification Center and the Maintenance Miter mobile app. Legal direction and compliance, we do track all of the state and federal regulations, so we'll take care of the hard part and digging up all the regulations, figuring out exactly what needs to be done in your jurisdiction, and we'll help you complete all those filings. Uh, physician oversight, prescriptions, EMS, and post-event notifications, we'll help you take care of all of those aspects. Um, knowledge, again, we've got a tremendous amount of experience in the club industry and know how to, to best implement these programs at your clubs. Um, in addition, we've also got a dedicated relationship manager um, that's dedicated to your clubs. So if you have any questions, you know exactly who to call and who's going to answer the phone, and they're going to know about your program. And the last piece, the medical support and direction. Uh, physician oversight, there's actually 23 states that currently require physician oversight. We think it's a best practice, so we have it available in all 50 states for you. Um, again, our inspectors that do our on-site inspections are all EMTs, paramedics, nurses, experts in the emergency management field, and they're also local to your community. So oftentimes it might be the EMT that works at your local fire station, and they've got a vested interest in making sure that your programs are up and running properly. Um, and our Cardio Ready trainers who do our AEDs and CPR certifications are all certified by the American Heart Association or the American Red Cross. A uh, quick glance at our pricing here for our CMA mem CMA and <laughs> CMAA members. 
you can see it up there. <laughs> uh, 450 per location for the first device and 225 for the second device. We've got great deals on the various devices for you. Um, most of the time we send them at cost. We really want the program management aspect to go along with that to make sure you've got a properly run program. And to cap it off here, you know, we want to help you save lives. This is a great program. We can help you put a comprehensive program into place, give you a really strong risk man management position, and ultimately come out with the best outcomes for your AED program. That's it. Thank you, Stacy. Sorry for the last name. I'm still getting used to the the new last name. Next up is Matt Garbinkis from IntelliCorp, our background check program. Matt has two and a half minutes. No pressure. <clears throat> Thank you, Christian. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about background checks today and, and more, more of uh, the importance of doing them as well as some of the compliance issues you should be aware of. And at the end, I'll let you know what's, what we're up to and how we might be able to help. <clears throat> now, it is your obligation as an employer to maintain a, sal a safe work environment. And, and those obligations arise from, from legal principles. Um, now, part of that safe work environment would be doing background checks and, and screening your employees. Um, now, part of doing background checks will help you mitigate risk of theft, violence, loss of business or customers, negligent hiring and even training or retraining someone because you know, it does cost money to hire somebody and then train them and then rehire them if it, if it was a bad hire. <clears throat> now even if a bad hire doesn't result in a lawsuit, uh, bad publicity could hurt your club quite a bit, so you want to stay away from that as well. And then while pre-employment screening or background checks aren't the only thing you should be doing, but it, it's not going to eliminate all that risk, it's going to help you with uh, peace of mind and making, making sure you're hiring the right people. Now the FCRA, that's um, one of the biggest components of what protects you when you're doing background checks, protects us, protects the candidates and so forth. Um, it is a pretty big piece of legislation with a lot of different provisions, but what that includes is how information is protected, what can be disclosed, how an individual can correct or delete in inaccurate information, uh, as well as dispute information. Um, you must understand what your obligations are under the FCRA. You, you are held to those standards, as well as us. We are a CRA, which we provide you the information, so we have standards as well that we have to follow. And like I said, the, the FCRA was designed to protect everybody involved. Now, some limits on using background checks. Now, criminal background checks are probably the most common background check run. Um, but some of the limits that you do have when you're using those, make sure you're not using just arrest information when you're doing your checks. It should be conviction information. Um, ban the box, you may have heard that term before. Ban the box is um, uh, a li uh, uh, legislation that has gone through a few states where you can't ask if someone's been convicted of a crime on an application. Uh, some states actually ban that. Um, it's probably not a good idea to do that anyway. So it's something you want to save for afterwards and not during the application process. Um, now the EEOC, we're probably all familiar with that. Um, part of the limits, they, they've um, updated some of their guidelines. But one of the things that, uh, or something they want you to consider when doing background checks is these green factors here. Um, nature of the crime, um, the harm caused, legal elements, classification, that sort of thing, time since conviction, and nature of the job, actually, as well. So those things you do want to consider when uh, looking at results of a background check. Like I said, they updated their guidelines about a year and a half ago in 2012. Um, employer's policy or practice for excluding applicants based on criminal convictions must include an evaluation that the exclusion is job-related for the position in question and consistent with business necessity. That's a pretty important piece of the EEOC guidelines. You want to make sure you're, um, when you're doing the background check, it applies to the position that they're doing uh, or, or uh, applying for, as well as um, if there is a result found that it, 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 if you're going to disqualify them, it has to be job related. Okay. And then also the assessment piece. After you do your background check, if there is something found that may disqualify somebody, do an individualized assessment because it is, every case is different, 
give the person time to maybe explain their case, and then, and then go from there. Now, conducting the proper background check, here's a couple tips that, that will help you with that. It should be post-job offer. Um, you should determine which checks are relevant to the position, so that should be predetermined on your policies and procedures. Um, consistent review of results. You don't want to um, fall in any discrimination type situations. You want to make sure that the internal policies are mandated and, and company-wide, that people understand what those policies are, especially the hiring managers and, those, and, and so forth. And have those written in written policy form. Written policies are, are, are going to save you. Um, you really want to make sure they're in written form. And, and available to the uh, employees and applicants to, uh, if, if there is a challenge. Part of conducting the proper background checks, we talked about some of that FCRA stuff. Um, but part of those, you want to have a disclosure no notice, so make sure the person's aware that a background check is going to be run. Make sure they, have, uh, they, they sign off on that written consent. Um, your pre-adverse action notices, so if there is action taken, you want to make sure you have those notices available and, and sent to the co uh, candidate. Adverse action after final decisions made. And there are some new forms that came out this year from the SCRA you want to be aware of as well. Okay. Um, some states have some specific requirements as well. So for instance, if you have licensed daycare or anything like that, there may be certain states One that, minute. Have, that have certain uh, requirements of you as well. Okay. <clears throat> Part of uh, doing the proper background checks is knowing what's available. You can see this list here. There's quite a few things. Criminal searches, there's a lot of things available. Um, then your other products like motor vehicle reports for drivers, drug testing, credit checks, and I-9 and E-Verify for um, eligibility to work in the country, that sort of thing. And then a little bit about us. Um, IntelliCore, we're just outside of Cleveland, been around since 96. Um, we are accredited through the NAPBS, which is a pretty big deal. We're one of 42 companies accredited um, out of about 2,800 companies out there. So being accredited is actually a big deal. Um, and since we are partnered with CMAA, we do offer discounts to the members as part of that um, partnership. So we are going to be exhibiting at the show as well. So we're going to be at booth 1036, I believe. So if you have questions, you can see me after or, or visit us at our booth. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Next up is our SEMA A Club Retirement Plan. Uh, Tom Case and Dennis Perlman are here with us today. Dennis is going to make some remarks. Now that you've uh, been reminded of how much responsibility you have day to day at your club, who wants to talk about retirement? <laughs> I'm going to be brief because I did get the eight minute memo. My firm is just down the road in Fort Myers in Naples, Florida, and we became uh, acquainted with CMAA several years ago, and we started working with them on the CMAA corporate plan. Through that relationship, we went around the country and talked to GMs and CFOs and tried to find out what was really important to them. Today, I'm representing CMAA. This is a true CMAA product where they are the plan sponsor, they're the co-trustee, they're the fiduciary, and that should be important to you. What else should be important to you is the fact that you sitting here as GMs, most of you are fiduciaries. Another factor is that most of you have the highest balance in your retirement plan. So not only should this be personal, but it should be, from a, a legal standpoint, very important for you. And it takes just a few moments to have a conversation with myself or my partners to talk about how this may benefit your plan. So when we went around the country and we talked to GMs, we talked about what's important to you. And what came back to us was fiduciary support, the reduction of uh, administrative responsibilities, such as sending out those fee disclosure notices or trying to determine what is reasonable fees, um, flexibility in plan design, and I'm going to talk about club culture in just a second, monitoring and due diligence, what we found that plans were not being monitored. And in fact, they weren't documented that they were being reviewed. And it has a direct correlation with your performance in your plan. And of course, the potential for cost savings. You can't talk about cost savings unless you talk about the potential for performance. 
So what should be important to you also is that when CMAA put this plan together, they wanted to have accountability. And the plan is managed through an investment policy statement, which allows for an open architecture opportunity, which means you can go out there and get any of the funds that are available in the marketplace and then have no proprietary requirements and specific selection, replacement, and monitoring criteria. We narrow down that list. My firm works directly with CMAA to narrow down that list and monitor that list for you. We publish and monitor review, um, review reports, and there's an annual audit that takes place on the CMAA plan. Most of you who have uh, participation under 100 people aren't required to have an audit, but the CMAA plan does get audited. And then here's another thing that should be important to you as far as accountability. There's a national CMAA retirement committee made up of some of your peers, Bobby Cavassi and Kevin Carroll, and then other members of the CMAA staff that monitor the plan for you. I mentioned club culture. One of the things at the same time that you're mitigating your fiduciary responsibility and some of your compliance things is that you wanted to maintain your club culture. And by that, you have flexibility in club design, in, in plan design. You can maintain a match. You can change your match. You can have whatever match you want. We have some clubs that have 100% matching on the first 1% to encourage uh, uh, participation. We have some clubs that um, will match a certain percentage all the way up to the limits for 2014, which are $17,500 and an extra $5,500 uh, to, um, to catch up. Your eligibility can be unique, and you decide whether you want to have loans, Roth, or electronic beneficiary uh, tracking. And then there's another thing that when we developed this plan with CMAA, we thought education would be the cornerstone of what we're trying to do. One of the number one things, and we go around the country and we talk to GMs, they say, I hadn't seen my guy, or I haven't had an education program, or I haven't gotten my people engaged because education wasn't a main part of it. Creating awareness, setting expectation, that's what it's all about for us. That's what it should be all about for you as you get closer to retirement. So what's your next steps? We're in booth 545. It's going to be called CMAA Club Retirement Plan because it's your plan. We just happen to be the advisors of it. There's a website uh, built into CMAA University, and there's a website there to call us. I'm Dennis Perlman, my partner is Tom Case, and there's another gentleman associate with us, his name is Ryan Derbis, and I want you to keep an eye out for this. This is a booklet that we've put together, six pages, that talks about the plan opportunity for you. You don't know how much it costs until you ask some of the questions and make, allow us to make uh, comparisons and proposals for you. How's that? It's incredible. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Next up uh, is G.A.B. Robbins, Bruce Freeman, uh, to talk about uh, appraisals and reserve studies. Boy, I don't know if we should uh, probably break for coffee, a stretch, or something. Is a good evening, good afternoon. I'm not really sure. Good to be here. It's good to be invited. Um, this is a topic that's, uh, you know, some people know a little bit about. Uh, we're going to at least give you some education on what you maybe should know and some things to ask about when the next time your policy is coming up for coverage uh, for policy limits. Uh, J.B. Robbins, I've been, I'm, my name is Bruce Riemann. I'm the senior appraiser for the firm. I've been working for J.B. for about 20 years. Uh, J.B. Robbins, who we are, uh, we're a company of 125 years, and we merged with Cunningham Lindsay in uh, 2010 to um, basically become the world's largest property adjusting uh, firm. So we know construction costs. Um, we were chosen as the sole uh, provider for insurance appraisals, personal property appraisals, and reserve studies for CMA affiliated uh, clubs out there across the nation, uh, the United States and Canada. Um, uh, we're a company with a history of stability, financial strength and respect in the marketplace, and we're a client-oriented uh, company whose fiduciary responsibility is really with the club. 
um, we're hired to determine value so you can get the proper insurance coverage. So when you hire us, we're working for the club, not so much necessarily for the carrier. So we try to give you an unbiased valuation. Um, the first question uh, it really is, is your, is your club properly insured? And uh, the next thing we kind of look at is, you know, what is an uh, insurance appraisal? So I guess do I just hit this one here, Christian? Is it a area? Space bar? There you go. Um, as you can kind of see, all of the different events down at the bottom, either hurricane if you're down in the Gulf States, Florida, or floods, that flood particular uh, picture down at the bottom was from a, a course that I did in Calgary on the floods that just happened back in 2013. Uh, fires, tornadoes, lightning, all of that comes into play when we have a loss. And our company knows losses very well. I run a division that's really set up prior to setting, getting your coverages correct before the loss occurs. It's kind of important to have that done rather than saying, gosh, I wish we would have had a million dollars more coverage. It would have been nice to have that done or an analysis done prior to. So the question really bears out is, is your club properly insured? And then you kind of say, well, how do I find that out? Well, what is a club insurance appraisal? An insurance appraisal is a replacement cost that provides an accurate estimate of the amount of insurance required to replace each structure accurately as it was appraised that day. So we look at labor, material, location, design, and architectural fees. We look at the architectural plans. We do a full inspection of every element that's at the club to come up with a replacement cost. So you basically can bring that analysis back to the agent and discuss it and say, this is what we need to have our club going forward have. So <clears throat> we do clubs throughout the whole nation like I talked about. About 250 we've done down here in Florida and over 1,000 across the nation in the United States and Canada. Um, values provided really assist in determining the amount of insurance appraisals needed for each structure the club insures. So this could be the maintenance facility in the far back corner to the crown jewel which is usually the clubhouse but now fitness centers have become so big that they're actually pretty expensive too to build and insure. So we cover all elements of the club, pump houses all the way through it. You know, why should the club uh, obtain an insurance appraisal? Insurance agents, and I know many of them, they're good friends of mine, they're really great at putting together policies together uh, for the club, for liability, property, or whatever the thing may be. But they're also not that great at determining construction costs and how much does a club really cost to put up in today's labor material, to building code, and that's all we specialize in at J.B. Robbins, and that's why we were chosen as the sole provider for those particular commodities. A club's insurance appraisal provides accurate values to ensure the club's structures and amenities are properly insured. Uh, probably the most, you know, more importantly and this is the one following, obtaining a third-party club insurance appraisal demonstrates due diligence on the part of the club manager, the board, to really who you actually serve, and that's the club members, that the, that the club itself is properly insured to the right coverage limits in case you have a loss. Yet once a loss occurs and you're too low, then it gets a little bit difficult. A club insurance also provides the documents in the event of a loss, which generally expedites the settlement of the claim. And we know claim business well because we're one of the largest in the world. The next part of, um, uh, we have three different products, insurance appraisal, personal property appraisal, and then we're going to get into reserve studies real quickly and try to wrap this whole session up. The personal property, the insurance appraisal, the first one I just talked about, is really the sticks and bricks of, of all the buildings, the clubhouse itself, all the finishes on the inside, but doesn't include any of the equipment, dining room, kitchens, and things of that. This is where the personal property appraisal uh, analysis comes in. So an insurance agent, um, I'm sorry, I'm off of the wrong one. My apologies on that one. There we go. Okay, a club personal property appraisal is an analysis that identifies personal property owned by the club such as kitchen equipment, dining room, fixtures, golf cart equipment, 
and so forth. So what we do is we inventory basically what the club has inside there. And we provide you basically a tailored type of replacement cost for new as well as depreciating replacement cost for each item identified in the club to be appraised. Uh, the club personal property appraisal provides a summary of the values by location. So we actually tell you how many chairs and tables are in this area, what the kitchen is, where the different equipment is, let's say if it's lawn care or course equipment, where it's located. And again, we give you replacement costs new and a depreciated replacement cost. And so and we also photograph and also give a description of each item that we have going forward in the club appraisal, personal property appraisal. You know, many times I'll ask uh, a controller or a GM what they really think the personal property is in the club. And that, you know, you look at a club and it might be a 20,000 square foot club to as large as some of the ones we've done is 125 to 165,000 uh, square feet. And that's a tough one to go by. I mean, if you look at the asset list and you're trying to say, well, I've got a pretty good handle of what the personal property is. If they have an accurate a asset list, that helps. But is the asset list current cost, are they accurate and up to date? So you can have a good accurate list on the asset list, but is the cost up to date? They usually sometimes are not always there in gel. That's our job is to give you all brand new numbers for that. So an accurate club of personal property appraisal assists the club in determining the correct amount of insurance coverage needed to cover the value of the contents of the club. A personal property appraisal also provides a complete inventory of the contents along the locations. And then a club personal property appraisal provides a documentation Necessary, necessary, and this is important, to settle the claim, if need be, for the loss. You know, we just had this professional out here, and this is what he's saying, and this is what we need to get to actually put the equipment back in. The last product that we offer, which is becoming just a, a real hot topic, and we've done so many of these, is a reserve study for the clubs. Um, a club reserve study is a budgetary planning tool that identifies the club's necessary major repairs and replacements and establishes a funding plan that ensures that there's adequate monies available when those expenditures are needed. So when we look at a club, we sit down with the general manager, the board, the controllers, and we look at it for a scheduled period of time, what they want to accomplish in five years, 10 years, 15 or 20 years. And then we know the building components that are going to need to be uh, replaced and, or uh, upgraded. And so then we basically, after that a schedule has been put together, we then basically set up a financial planning tool for them to accrue money at a, at, to basically replace these particular pro, uh, uh, events at the regular time. So let's say if we needed to have a roof done in five years along with painting the clubhouse with possibly also doing some renovations, we would schedule that in and tell how much is needed to allocate to each club member so we have the money in 2017, 2018 to actually do the repairs or the renovations. So it's twofold. It identifies repairs and also sets up a funding plan so you can basically get all the monies in hand so you're all set. That. Um, all GAB Robbins reserve studies are done by designated reserve study specialists. And, you know, some of the things that we do is, you know, in our report, you'll see as the last thing, um, they're an invaluable management tool for the controllers, the GMs, the boards, and then communicating that to the club members of what is needed to keep the club moving in the right direction for years to come. Um, again, like I said, we identify all the major building and site compo components for a predictable future repair and repa replacement, excuse me, based on observed market data for similar clubs at your club's actual replacement histories are also entered into it. Um, a GAB Robbins Reserve Study provides an unbiased budgetary funding plan that assists the club in ensuring that the funds are available for planned repairs and replacement. 
And that's it. You guys are all done, at least on my end of it. Thanks for kind of putting up with me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bruce. Just another couple of housekeeping. Again, this session number was 1413. 1413. To apologize for some of the technology difficulties, we will have the video. We do have one of our videos currently on our Club Solutions YouTube channel. Uh, we will have all the ones or the one that you missed today from Asperity up there right away. In fact, it's already up there as we speak. Um, and so feel free to check those out uh, as well as all the other content areas that we talked about today. We'll be in the Member Services Pavilion. We have a Club Solutions booth where Jeff, myself, others on staff, as well as uh, some of the representatives from, from some of these services available, as well as the Expo, of course, at the end of the week where most of the companies that you saw today are represented and will be there to talk about their products and services as part of our Club Solutions model. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Take care.